All right, and we are live again. So this Vortex Doom Loop seems far from over, despite the commitments from the Federal Reserve, despite the commitments recently from the European Central Bank and other central banks, flooding the global economy and derivatives markets and elsewhere with dollars. There are still, the next shoe to drop in my opinion is the credit ratings downgrades that are coming for these investment grade bonds and these large corporations. Some of them were in trouble before the global pandemic and the global pandemic has been the kill shot. So the pin that, pip, that pricked the debt bubble or the scapegoat, depending upon how you want to look at it, maybe both. But this appears to be a major, major problem is the commercial real estate. So what we saw from Congress, both political parties now, they're throwing us scraps. They're treating us like even more like serfs. $1,200 they want to give us. That does not even cover rent in most major cities and metro areas or mortgage payments. So I don't know what Congress has planned. I don't, don't know exactly what the banks have planned. Maybe they're going to keep changing the rules. But unless they suspend mortgage payments like Italy did for at least a month or two, I think Italy suspended mortgage payments for a couple months while they're dealing with the global pandemic there. And prayers to our friends in Italy who are listening on this podcast. It's, it's still pretty bad, although the amount of deaths is going down slightly. But the commercial real estate market, commercial mortgages is a complete and total disaster. I looked up a number of stories for you guys about this. I even found the banks, a list from last year of the banks with the largest commercial real estate loan books. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But just in the last hour or two, this story wire came out at 5.22 p.m. Eastern Time from Matthew Kang at laeater.com. So this is a restaurant website, eaterlosangeles.com. And it says the Cheesecake Factory tells landlords across the country it won't be able to pay rent on April 1st. So this is the first publication with this, the Cheesecake Factory. As some of you may not like the restaurant, I personally, uh, the, it's okay, it's big portions and stuff. But what's most important is that it is the key restaurant for a lot of shopping centers. So the, you're starting to see it now where these restaurants that are well-known cannot pay rent. So cheesecake, there will be more. There will be more blood. Just like the oil companies, there will be more blood. There will be many more companies like this. So the Cheesecake Factory tells landlords across the country it won't be able to pay rent on April 1st. The chain restaurant says closing dining, closed dining rooms and extraordinary events are the reason for not paying rents. The Cheesecake Factory, one of the most popular sit-down restaurants in the country, says it will not be able to make upcoming rent payments for any of its storefronts on April 1st because of the significant loss of income due to the global pandemic. So the restaurant business is capital intensive, low margin. The management team at Cheesecake Factory probably to appease investors, probably used a lot of debt on the balance sheet. They carry a lot of inventory because they have an enormous menu and a lot of different things on the menu so everything doesn't overlap. So this is a low margin, capital intensive, very razor thin business that anything that uh, even the slightest things could could put the business in jeopardy. And here we are at the global pandemic. And now you see why they can't pay rent, um, you know, in a week to 10 days. So the Calabasas Hills company informed all of its landlords in a letter dated March 18th, reproduced below. So this article has a copy of the letter that a severe decline in restaurant traffic has decreased its cash flow and, quote, inflicted a tremendous financial blow to the business. Cheesecake Factory's affiliated restaurants such as Rock Sugar and North Italia will also not make April 1st rent payments company. And this is the Vortex Doom Loop because now the holders of commercial real estate mortgages, they're fucked. <laughs> they're, they're, this is probably going to get demonetized anyway. They're fucked too. <laughs> so this is, you know, the counterparties are screwed up. The bank's loan books are screwed up. If the bank sold this to real estate investors, my parents were commercial real estate investors and in collecting rent checks up um, up from investments in New York City. They uh, Those investments are not doing well at all. So this is a vicious cycle. 
just like with the credit ratings downgrades that are going to come, just like how the banks were caught, some of the banks in Europe and the U.S. were caught, hold, their loan books were drastically declining in value the last couple weeks, their bond portfolios, and also with the European banks, so the European banks, I found out through my contact uh, upper management of one of the ratings agencies that the European banks were stuck with an enormous amount of leveraged loans and collateralized loan obligations that they could not dump on sucker pension funds and Japanese banks anymore. The game of musical chairs ended, the, ga the, hot the game of hot potato ended, and the European banks were left holding the bag. And guess what? That means the Fed and the European Central Bank are going to have to buy up all of that toxic sausage garbage that radioactive stuff that went from an asset very quickly, this was easily predictable, that went from an asset into a toxic liability, into an asset that was generating cash flow, because remember, these CLOs were paying until probably recently, the CLOs were paying um, fairly decent amounts of interest coupons, and then now they've gone from an asset into a liability, very similar to 2008 with mortgage-backed securities and derivatives. This was predictable. It was a question of when and not if. So the banks are holding a lot of this stuff too, a lot of these commercial real estate mortgages, and they are starting to go bad. This article is from AmericanBanker.com. This came out in June of 2019. This was an updated commercial real estate loan portfolio, and it says that total loans and leases, Wells Fargo owns the most for commercial real estate, followed by JP Morgan, Bank of America, US Bank Corp, PNC Bank, and New York Community Bank Corp, and then M&T Bank and Capital One, Citigroup, BBNT to round out the top 10. If you want to see the list, I'll put it in the information and description section. Wells Fargo is way up there. Wells Fargo was talked about in an article in behind my Patreon about two or three weeks ago, maybe a month. There was an article with a stock chart, Wells Fargo board of directors leaving, the chairman of Wells Fargo's board resigned a couple weeks ago and refused to, even though they were subpoenaed, refused to testify before Congress. And so since they resigned, they didn't have to testify. And another Wells Fargo board of director also resigned too. So he didn't have to testify. So I'm guessing all this stuff is connected. So Cheesecake Factory, let me go back to the Cheesecake Factory article. I'm moving around here because I'm trying to fill in, trying to connect the dots and fill in the blanks for some of you guys about the real estate market and the counterparty risk and how people re were relying on commercial real estate mortgages being paid for income like my parents and and the banks are caught holding this this stuff again. Danielle DiMartino Booth did say commercial real estate over the last couple of years was going to bust. I just don't think she thought it would be this bad what's coming because obviously I don't think anyone saw the global pandemic coming and how potentially we could have massive waves of defaults on commercial real estate by key anchor tenants for shopping malls whatever's left of the shopping malls that Amazon is not buying them. Yet, have you guys noticed this? Amazon has been actually buying up these empty shopping malls where most of the anchor stores and the other stores have gone out of business or closed. Amazon's buying these old shopping malls up and turning them into warehouses and distribution centers close to where people live. So they basically bankrupted a lot of these companies and now they're buying up the real estate, the old shopping malls for pennies on the dollar. <laughs> this is it's unbelievably devious and unbelievably brilliant. Okay, so uh, back to the article. Uh, the Calabasas Hills-based company informed all landlords. Okay, the letters below if you want to read it. Company chairman and CEO David Overton writes, Due to these extraordinary events, I am asking for your patience and, frankly, your help. He continues, We appreciate our landlord's understanding given the exigency of the current situation. The Cheesecake Factory was founded in Beverly Hills in 1972 and maintains its original location in Beverly Hills with 39 locations in California, 294 restaurants in 39 states, plus District of Columbia around here, Puerto Rico, and Toronto, Canada. If you want to read more about the article, oh, they had 38,000 employees whose jobs are clearly, they've probably already been fired or they're seriously in jeopardy. So let's talk about now the real estate billionaire uh, Tom Barrick saying the commercial mortgages on the brink of collapse. Bloomberg did a story a couple days ago from Eric Schatzker that you can see there on your screen. 
Real estate investor Tom Barrick, I think he's a billionaire. The yeah, it says in the title he's a billionaire. Said the U.S. commercial. I'm not. I never heard of him prior to this article. I believe he's friends with Trump. Said the U.S. commercial mortgage market is on the brink of collapse and predicted a domino effect of catastrophic economic consequences if banks and government don't take prompt action to keep borrowers from defaulting. Barrick, chairman and chief executive officer of Colony Capital, warned in a white paper and in a subsequent interview on Bloomberg Television of a chain reaction of margin calls, mass foreclosures, evictions, and potentially bank failures due to the coronavirus that's going to get demonetized anyway due to the global pandemic and consequent shutdown of much of the U.S. economy. Quote, to keep people employed, you have to support the employers. He said Monday in the interview, quote, the biggest part of the employer expense is rent when commerce stops and they can't pay rent and they can't pay interest on the debt and then the banks and the intermediaries can't pay their investors. It all collapses. So this is very similar to what happened to the real estate crisis in 2008, except now it's people can't pay their mortgages, people can't pay their rent now, and also commercial real estate. Stores can't pay their rent. Restaurants can't pay their rent. So this is, this is the, a big part of the vortex doom loop. And then the people who were relying on the mortgage payments for interest income, say so either the banks or real estate investors, they're, they're getting screwed. And then the banks are also getting screwed too. So everyone is getting enormous amounts of pain. We'll see what the government decides to do at this point. Okay, Barrick, who is 72 years old, said the impact could dwarf that of the Great Depression, affecting everyone from homeowners to real estate developers to hotel operators. That's why everyone's going to the government for some type of bailout. Specifically, his paper highlights the fragility of mortgage real estate investment trusts, or REITs, and credit funds and the lenders that provide them with liquidity via repurchase financing. The Federal Reserve, which on Monday announced new measures to support the economy, including more bond purchases, trying to buy all this toxic garbage up, either yield curve control for the Federal Reserve so the U.S. government can run unbelievably larger government budget deficits because the tax revenues are no longer going to be coming in, or the bond portfolios that the banks are holding that are about to all blow up in their face that are declining rapidly in value. The Fed will have to, to prevent the banks from all going under, and this is why the reserve ratio, the reserve requirement ratio was moved down to zero because if it was higher, the banks would have already been viewed as insolvent even with phony accounting. It's to make the banks look, prop them up, because from what I've heard from sources, the bank's bond portfolios have collapsed in value, the stuff that they're still holding. So the Fed will have to come in like they always do to save the large banks, and will have to come in and pay 100 cents on the dollar to bail out the banks. If you're not familiar with my YouTube channel and with what the Federal Reserve does, they do this all the time in every crisis. The Federal Reserve, okay, which on Monday announced new measures to support the economy, including more bond purchases, is doing exactly what they need to do, uh, according to the paper. But the program still isn't enough to relieve the liquidity crisis in the market for commercial mortgage-backed securities, Tom Barrick said. Yeah, which means the Fed needs to come in and buy all this toxic garbage up and pay 100 cents on the dollar. Okay, he proposed a rescue plan coordinated by banks and supported by Congress and regulators that includes the following. Quote, what everybody needs is just a timeout, he said in the interview. Give them 60 or 90 days. Let it all come back together. Tack on that accrued interest to the end, and you solve the problem. The challenge, he said, is finding a solution that safeguards the banking system while avoiding the perceptions of crony capitalism associated with the bailouts that followed the 2008 financial crisis. The other problem is Congress. Congress is literally stealing everything both parties are that they can right now the average person on main street middle class working class poor people are getting going to get very very little and then meanwhile a 500 billion dollar fund is being set up and yes they can't the corporations are going to be told they can't do share buybacks for at least a year or something i think i saw the airlines maybe at least a year I think there's a warning. There's like Congress is waving their finger at the airlines. You can't do share buybacks for at least a year. But um, that $500 billion, 
that can be used for leverage buyouts. So just because the senior executives can't do share buybacks with that $500 billion doesn't mean they can't take advantage of this crisis and go and buy quality small and medium-sized companies and buy that are distressed and buy those assets for literally pennies on the dollar. And those corporations actually benefit from this crisis because the U.S. taxpayer and people holding dollars, their purchasing power is then subsidizing these large corporations with an extra $500 billion to go and do leverage buyouts and become stronger in the, uh, after this crisis is over. There's nothing fair about that, especially when the average person on Main Street is not even getting a check to pay their rent or, or, uh, or their mortgage. Welcome to Dystopia, right? Okay, so back to this article. The challenge, he said, finding a solution that safeguards banking, the banking system while avoiding the perceptions of crony capitalism associated with the bailouts that followed the 2008 financial crisis. Safeguarding the banking system, that means the Fed's going to have to go in and buy all this toxic garbage for 100 cents on the dollar. Same thing with the European Central Bank and the European banks. Maybe the Fed has to help the European banks too because the Fed is larger and the European Central Bank can't handle all of it. Plus, there's a dollar shortage, and the dollar funding markets in Europe and Asia needed massive amounts of dollars the last couple weeks, and that's why the Fed is flooding the world with dollars. Tom Barrick, who is a longtime friend of President Donald Trump, has much at stake in the outcome. Much of Colony Capital's investments are in or connected to real estate. The Los Angeles-based firm's year-end financial report lists $3.54 billion of assets in hospitality, real estate, and $725 million of debt and equity investments at Colony Credit Real Estate Incorporated, its publicly traded commercial mortgage real estate investment trust. Colony, whose shares have plunged 68% this year, is in a great position, the, the uh, Tom Bear claims, with almost $3 billion of cash. So let me look at that stock. Let's take a look at this stock. Colony Capital. It's in a great position with $3 billion in cash. The great This great position, the shares went on... I have Seeking Alpha up. It went on... February 19th, it was $4.88 a share, and by March 23rd, it was $1.41. It has rallied in the last couple days on hopes of Congress bailing them out. It has, it has rallied a little bit. Dividend yield, it, its dividend yield is 25.14%. Unbelievable. Its uh, payout ratio is 122%. You guys know about what I say about those. The odds are big, big dividend cuts. There are other companies to look at um, for commercial real estate. There's uh, Apollo Commercial Real Estate Finance. So ARI, like Arizona, that those shares have collapsed. They were at $17.02 a share on March 2nd. Now it's at $7.42, although it had a 75% rally today. <laughs> oh my God, the, the short covering. 75% rally. That's like a biotech stock. That's a biotech stock jump right there. That's a pop. Dividend yield. Dividend yield is 37.74%. Again, another yield trap. Another yield trap in my opinion. Companies, stocks with, the, with dividend yields that high will not pay out. Let's see. Dividend payout ratio is 98.10%. According to Seeking Alpha, that's close to the, that dividend yield is so high, looking like a cut, dividend cuts. I mean, these companies are on the brink. Unless they get a bailout, most of these companies are probably going to be bankrupt in six months or less. Let's see here. There's a couple more I wanted to talk about. So there's Aries, like the God of War, A-R-E-S, Aries Commercial Real Estate Corporation, A-C-R-E, those shares also rallied today. That stock was at $17.68 on February 21st, and it crashed down to $4.30 on March 18th. And it has, wow, well, that one has not rallied that much. It only went up 11.2%. Th this one's sputtering more. The market seems to really not like these shares. These shares have not rallied as much as the others in the last couple days on hopes of a bailout. Dividend yield is at 25.53%. And let's look up the payout ratio. Payout ratio is at 103, which is also high. There, I will attach an article with additional of these um, commercial real estate companies that are investing in commercial real estate. Bottom line is a lot of these ones are in peril. Potentially, if they don't get a bailout, you could be looking at bankruptcies for a lot of them. The banks, 
Wells Fargo will have to maybe write off a lot of loans. It would I would I haven't looked at the balance sheet, so I can't comment a lot on Wells Fargo right now. I'd have to do more work on that. That might be a project, a research project for my patrons behind the paywall for five bucks a month for a lousy cup of coffee. An overpriced cup of coffee. Starbucks, yeah, Starbucks is mediocre. For a mediocre to lousy cup of coffee. You can take a look at my research behind the paywall, audio podcast, technical analysis charts, and some well-written fundamental articles. Okay, so let's take a look at the Super Chats now. Got a Super Chat from Justin. Thank you very much, Justin. Super Chat from Sparsh Perimu. Some miners shutting down mines due to country lockdowns. What happens to gold miner stocks? Um, That would only be temporary. So Peru already shut down mines. There was a government mandatory shutdown a week ago. So for 14 days. So we'll see what happens. It would only be temporary. It might be a buying opportunity. If it's a good company and they shut down a couple of their mines, but they still have cash flow, might be a buying opportunity. There's some really good gold miners that have, that have been forced by the governments to shut down. So it might be a, uh, a buying opportunity in the near future. The market may overreact. And that would be a, a potential buying opportunity. Especially if gold prices go higher. Looks like, let me, I haven't looked at the gold price today. Okay, the gold price, let me just hit the refresh button here. The stock market closed fairly flat, down a tiny amount on. Wait, actually, we're into the futures now. Uh, it's putting the futures up. I didn't see the closing prices. Okay, the gold price is at uh, over 1600 still. VIX, is, VIX got smashed down the last couple days. You'd think with all the stuff that's still going on, the VIX would be at Lehman Brothers levels. I guess people have calmed down. We're taking profits or the leverage short volatility traders are shorting it again. You'd think it would be up around Lehman Brothers levels, but maybe people are betting on a bailout now, like larger and larger bailouts. Dollar index is down significantly. It's now barely above 100. It's down below 101 at 100.96. And these junk bond ETFs. I wanted to talk about that. Let's see here. Let's see here. iShares, iBox, high yield corporate bond ETF, HYG. Year to date, on March 4th, it was at 87.12. It dropped down to 68.63 on March 23rd. It's rallied a tiny amount. So the corporate bond ETFs are getting killed in only the last couple weeks. Again, I tell this to my patrons. In my opinion, do not buy all your mining stocks at once. I get comments, um, emails, people all the time. They watched a YouTube video. They listened to an interview with the CEO on another YouTube channel, and they bought all these mining shares at once. Oops. And then they want me to, of course, um, help them fix it for free. I get sometimes like these five-page emails. They're really sad. It's, it's truly sad. Do not buy all of your mining shares at once. Just in case the mine shuts down and it crashes, could be a really good buying opportunity. Could still be a really good company. 12 months, 18 months later, the stock might be up a lot. Happened in 2008 and 2009. Okay, let me see. I got some more Super Chats here. Thank you for the Super Chat, Sean. Sean, are you a Patreon account contributor yet? I know you say you love this channel. Okay, Sean says, did I see the Mexican peso exchange rate to the dollar? 25 to 1 now. 25 pesos to 1. Yeah, I saw a chart of it. It's crazy. It's devaluing very, very rapidly against the dollar. They, ha I think there's a lot of dollar denominated debt in Mexico, also in Brazil, Asia. There was a big dollar shortage, but the Fed is flooding the global economy with massive amounts of dollars, like trillions and trillions. And um, Lynn Alden was talking about this hours ago, that it looks like things are a little better with the dollar shortage because the Fed's been flooding over the last week or two just trillions and trillions of dollars into the dollar funding markets in Asia and uh, Europe.
I thought the dollar was supposed to collapse first, Sean. Hmm. Primal American, thank you for the super chat. He says, YouTube doesn't notify me when you stream. Yeah, people are being unsubscribed. There's longtime listeners to the channel. People are being unsubscribed, don't even know. Um, also, uh, I think I've added like 200 new subscribers to my YouTube channel, despite how I'm getting over 5,000 views per video. YouTube clearly doesn't want this channel being a success. Most of my uh, videos are either totally demonetized or limited or no ads. So if they do run ads, normally YouTube gets all, almost all the ad revenue, which is why I need to move more of my income over to my Patreon so I can still do this content and have my bills paid over, I guess, on the Patreon. So if YouTube screws me over completely and totally, then um, I at least have a backup plan. I only ha I have almost 500 people watching and only 87 likes. Wow. I always forget to do that. I just focus on the content. I should get like a channel moderator. I should get like a hype man or a hype woman. I need like a Larry Kudlow. I need like a hype man or hype woman. Okay, got a couple more super chats. Jonathan Howe, okay, thank you for the super chat. Is OWNX.com a reputable gold seller? I've never heard of it. I haven't looked into it. I've never heard of it. So if it is, I wouldn't know. I only know like the, the basic ones. So like your app max and some of the, and some of the other ones. You know, a lot of the bullion dealers have, have went bankrupt uh, in the last like five or six years. So no, I don't. Uh, you have McIlvany Financials vaulted. That's the, that's a fairly new one. I think Provident merged. Oh, SD Bullion is the other. Yeah, I bought from SD Bullion. I like SD Bullion. You have Gainesville Coins, you have Scottsdale Silver. A lot of the bullion dealers that were gone, I mean, Northwest Territorial Mint, Tolvig, Bullion Direct, all went bankrupt in the last, like, five or six years. A lot of local coin dealers went bankrupt. So, no, I don't know ownx.com, never heard of it. Okay, another super chat. If Fed is backstopping everything, how can it all implode? What if Chinese come up with gold, RMB, or yuan? Um, but the Chinese are also printing. Thank you for the super chat, Dimitri. Um, why would China voluntarily want gold to leave the country? They don't. They don't even let their own citizens take gold out of the country. I've talked about this a million times. Uh, it can all implode on confidence. So the Fed can't plug all the holes. The Fed can still make mistakes. Even though the Fed is flooding the dollar funding markets in Asia and Europe with dollars, that doesn't mean they're going to they're gonna, um, not screw up. That doesn't mean they're going to save the commercial real estate market in time. It doesn't mean they're going to save the credit ratings downgrades for the for the investment grade corporate bonds um, at, at the right time before it collapses. The Fed will make lots of mistakes. The only advantage, and this is an advantage in air quotes, this is an advantage if you're a paper trader and you're making a lot of money off the asset price reflation. The only advantage the Fed has is the Fed can paper over all their mistakes. The Fed makes lots of mistakes. The Fed makes lots of really large mistakes on a daily basis. The difference between them and us is if we make a mistake, we lose a lot of money. The Fed, If a Fed makes a mistake, the Fed takes no accountability, no responsibility for their fuck-ups, and <laughs> then, the, then the Fed just creates more money. They change the accounting rules. They change the rules. They print more money. Or like what Steve Mnuchin just said on TV a couple hours ago, Steve Mnuchin said that small businesses here in the U.S., they're going to get all this emergent, all these emergency loan money as long as they don't fire their employees and their loans will be forgiven in a few months. They won't have to pay it back. So emergency loans, small business owners will get them. At least that's a, uh, as of right now. We'll see if they actually do that.
Oh, we got a super chat from Bob. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Bob, this is on YouTube, and YouTube's taken a very large cut of that $5 super chat you just gave me. You would get more content over on Patreon, and I would get more of the money you chipped in. YouTube takes a big cut of anything in the super chat and all my ad revenues. Okay, thank you for the super chat, Pedrito Navaja. At what price would I stop buying Sandstorm Gold? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I would just keep buying it. They're going to do more deals. I was speaking with the CEO and it sounds like um, the bankers want to give him even larger revolving credit facilities if he can find another deal for immediate cash flow. The bankers love that company and they want to, um, the best Canadian bankers, and they want to give him larger credit lines to do more deals for immediate cash flow. So I'm a buyer. I'm accumulating more. If, it, if the valuation just gets stupid, I think Sandstorm Gold will be bought. The worst case scenario, in my opinion, is Franco Nevada buys them. I don't know what at what price. I don't know what premium. I've been saying this for years, that Franco Nevada would, that would be an ideal acquisition for Franco Nevada to go and buy Sandstorm Gold because Franco does not have a lot of growth five or six years out and Sandstorm Gold does. Unfortunately, that would be bad for Sandstorm Gold shareholders because I don't know what premium we would get and that would cap our upside. That's my opinion. They're a very attractive buyout candidate for the larger companies. They have very good assets, cash flow, and a lot of growth in the pipeline. Okay, well, I think that's it for the short live stream show. Oh, I also wanted to bring up Macy's. So Macy's, this is about the commercial real estate with shopping malls and strip malls. Macy's was having problems before the global pandemic, the coronavirus. Macy's debt rating was cut to junk by S&P on February 18th. So that was right before, you know, things really started getting bad here. And in Macy's, um, it came out earlier in February. So before their credit rating was downgraded to junk that Macy's is closing 125 department stores, shutting down over restructuring. Macy's has gone bankrupt before, and I think they're focusing on going into strip malls now and leaving a lot of the larger malls. But you've had JCPenney's, Sears, Macy's, you know, all these large big box stores are all having problems. Everyone's shopping online. Amazon's eating their lunch. A lot of other stores are moving away from bricks and mortars, moving to online business. Because the, you cut the costs, you cut the labor costs, you don't have to pay as many people at a retail store, you don't have to pay expensive leases for a retail store, and you don't have to pay as many employees a uh, higher minimum wage. Look, I, I think if everyone learns how to make more money online, I think it's a good thing. People are going to have a lot of free time. There's Masterclass, there's Skillshare, there's Khan Academy, there's Audible audiobooks, there's YouTube videos, there's podcast. There's tons and tons of stuff to learn online. So you have a lot of free time. Go and learn something useful. And then come out of this in a year or two with a new skill that you can make more money or a side hustle online or a new online business. That is the challenge. Do not spend all your time. It's okay to watch TV once in a while. I like a break from reality. I can't handle all this bad news all the time. But most people are, are they're going to waste all their time. They're going to find a new bread and circus. They're going to find a new thing to, to tune the bad news out. Instead of focusing, saying like, you know what? I'm going to have a few months of time to learn. I can learn a new language. Could buy a program or something online. I could learn a new skill. Maybe learn a code. There's tons of opportunities with this free time. Some people have never had this much free time before. But most people will not use it wisely. Okay, everyone. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And thank you very much to my over 500 Patreon account contributors. It is right at 600 now. It is growing very, very rapidly. A lot of people are stepping up and chipping in. So I can focus on content, research, information, and analysis. Put some of the stuff behind the paywall to pay my bills. Just in case YouTube decides to make this thing, uh, make my life even worse on this channel. I've added like a couple hundred subscribers, I think, in the last couple months, even though I'm getting over 5,000 views per video. It's, it's totally ridiculous. Okay, so 
Everyone have a good week. I will work on getting some more interview guests. I have a couple people that may get booked in the next week. We'll see. These things always can get canceled. I'll keep you everyone informed.